Now, your talk at the 2012 CrestCon was looking at 3D graphics and the risks that are posed by 3D graphics engines in web browsers. Why is that a risk and what type of threats could that pose to computer users and businesses in particular? Well, one of the uh, big issues is the infrastructure required to produce these 3D graphics is not a sort of trivial piece of code. It's actually quite, it's quite a lot of third parties involved. The graphics card manufacturers are required to produce their software, which hasn't historically been the most uh, secure of, of software. And so exposing that to untrusted users is potentially a big risk, especially for a sort of corporate lockdown environment where you don't want to expose more functionality than perhaps you wanted to. What sorts of exploits are you seeing in the wild? In the wild at the moment, fortunately, none that I, that I am aware of. Um, but there is certainly potential for more or less any class of, of issues, especially information disclosure issues down to reading out other people's uh, information without directly accessing it. And that could potentially create some difficulties for businesses if they have to maintain security. So what should they be doing to look out for this? As you say, this is a nascent problem. It's not something that is necessarily going to be picked up by all the current anti-malware tools that are out there. It is basically a issue. It's, most of it will come down to actual specific vulnerabilities which allow you to extract this information. So the AV products or the IDS products would be required to support the detection of those type of vulnerabilities in the browsers themselves. In how big a risk do you think this poses to organisations? Because these browsers, and they're still quite new, aren't they? There's only Firefox and Google Chrome that have the 3D support enabled in them. Presumably they will proliferate over time though. Certainly, over time, I feel more browsers will get them. There's also separate plugins which can be run in Internet Explorer or Safari, which would support this functionality without actually being specifically implemented in the browser. So, over time, it, it will get more exposed to, to more customers. And what's this being driven by? Is this being driven by gaming, for example? Is that why the browser manufacturers are supporting this type of technology? Certainly, it seems to be the, one of the biggest uses for it. I think the, uh, probably the most popular WebGL application is you can get Angry Birds for Google Chrome, which uses WebGL to speed up its rendering. So that is definitely a driving mechanism. But Google and Mozilla have demonstrated um, sort of more business-style functionality. For example, medical imaging may be a useful user of this technology because you can produce quite realistic 3D models. So it's not just an entertainment technology, it's something that businesses might want to use, assuming the security issues can be resolved. It's, it's certainly something businesses could use to distribute um, high quality 3D information to, to other people. So what sorts of steps should organisations be taking now to ensure that they're not opening up vulnerabilities by allowing 3D support within the browsers that they use? Certainly I think about the only thing they can do at the moment is to determine whether they really need that support enabled in the browsers. Unfortunately, disabling this functionality is usually on a sort of ad hoc basis. You can't sort of deploy it um, using group policy or anything like that very easily. So it's not something that businesses can easily sort of selectively allow for certain sites and disable for other sites. So it's, it's a bit immature at the moment in what they can do.